Hello, everyone. This is Felicia Bender, the Practical Numerologist, with your numerology forecast for the one personal year for May 2023. So if you are new to numerology and you don't know your personal year number, if you have no idea what that is, or you're just unclear, unsure, right? This is new to you. Uh, please just pause for two seconds, okay? Either go to FeliciaBender.com. That's my website. You can find a, uh, a calculator there if you look under monthly forecasts. Uh, you can have a personal year calculator that shows up right there for you. There's also a very, very brief, very easy calculation uh, in the description box below. So if you want to just make sure, double check that you are at the right place at the right time, because this forecast is based on the personal year, not on your life path number. So those are two entirely different things in numerology. And we just want to make sure you're at the right place at the right time, listening to the right forecast. All right. So let's just jump right in though. With that said, I know we want to get right to it, right? So May is a number six personal month for you. So you have a personal year, and then you have a point of destination within that, which is uh, the frequency, the vibe, what's going on for you in your uh, four week, in the four weeks that are any given month. So this month for you, May is a number six. So this is the month to focus on how you co-create uh, in your home, with your family, and within your relationship life. So May is upon us. Happy spring. I hope you're Hope you're somewhere where you're really enjoying the weather. Uh, that's what I'm my fondest hope for you. So anyway, happy spring, happy May. And there is no better time than where we are right now to circle back and offer a reminder about the key elements or themes that you are working with all year long in your one personal year. I think it really is important to come back to these as a point of reference again and again. So I do like to describe the personal year as knowing the theme to your party. It's so much more fun that way, right? We wanna show up at the right party in the right outfit. <laughs> especially if we're going to be there for an entire year, right? 12 months. And I think it's really valuable to think of it exactly that way. Uh, it is like you're showing up for this party for this extended period of time. So you really, you really do want to know, wouldn't it be beneficial to know if it's a baby shower, maybe it's a birthday party, maybe it's a bachelor or bachelorette party. Uh, could be a memorial service. It'd be a little bit of a different party, right? Or maybe a drinking party with charades. Who knows? But wouldn't it be nice to know uh, what the setup is, what the setup is for your party? So that is like uh, you arriving in your personal year or within your personal year, not having a clue. So that's what numerology is good for, is for giving you a clue about what you're working with and how to optimize it, right? How to, uh, how to make it work for you you not against you. So uh, for you in your one personal year, the key themes that you're working with right now, this is an entirely new cycle for you. Uh, last year was closures, was, you know, kind of shutting the door around certain things. This year is beginnings. It's developing and exerting independence. And it's planting the seeds for this brand new cycle. Really the value and the importance of this year as a one personal year as the the, the beginning, the opening up for you cannot be underestimated. Uh, so you really have to be mindful or, or it would be beneficial to be mindful about it and, um, and make it count, really be intentional about what you are calling in uh, to create your world from this point forward. This is an entirely new cycle that you are setting things up for. And what I do love about numerology is that it does offer the key elements that are always at play here uh, that are support supporting us, offering us these opportunities. Um, so it's, it's really the idea here, obviously, is so that we can uh, focus and intentionally use the energy uh, that we're being that we're being handed, right? It's right there for us if we want to use it. So we can use the energy or have it use us. So I think I said that before, but with that said, once again, for emphasis, 
uh, May for you in your one, in your new beginnings year is a six personal month. So what is that? What does that mean? What does that bring to you in May? The six, the number six, which is what your, your whole uh, month is immersed in, is all about home. It's about family, responsibility. It's about relationships. So how could this possibly show up for you in a one personal year? So I'll give you a few examples here. So if you are, let's say you're coupled, uh, this is a month where you can really bask in in what and who you love right this could be a really loving lovable formidable beautiful time to enjoy that uh, it can be a time for recommitment or up leveling your uh, significant intimate partnership in whatever way you would like to to do that this can manifest as making um what date night a priority adding some sizzle into your sex life in whatever way you would like to do that or even deciding to do something like couples counseling or a relationship building class or to tag on to the building your sex life maybe a tantric class right maybe you want to really explore that with with your intimate partner it could be anything along these lines in terms of bringing you together uh, into a more powerful more co-creative partnership. So if you have been thinking about making a significant shift in a relationship, you may want to initiate uh, some change sometime around May 17th. That is a good day to initiate for you. Uh, when the six shows up in a cycle, as it is for you for your entire month here in May, it pulls in opportunities and experiences that often are going to feel like they're forcing your hand. So if a relationship hasn't been working for you and you've just been kind of holding out hope, right? <laughs> or I don't know, that it'll get better somehow magically, uh, or maybe you're holding on because you're afraid to rock the boat or whatever that could be. Often the energy of the six calls in something that will push that envelope, right? That's gonna move you right or left of center. So this is equally true if you're hovering around the decision to Put a ring on it, so to speak. Maybe, uh, maybe you're wanting to up level. Maybe you're wanting to propose. Uh, maybe you want to have that. I don't know that that uh, another anniversary. Another anniversary is coming up. You want to really go all out. Anything like that. The month of May might be the time where an important relationship is even taken to this next level of commitment. So also, if you're a parent, this is a wonderful time to place some focus and some energy into your kids. This could include grandkids, it can fur babies, uh, all of those things. And if you're uh, younger, you don't have kids, it could be uh, about nieces, nephews. Um, it could be about the, you know, the kid in you <laughs> to seriously to uh, bring out that playfulness and, uh, and nurture that aspect of yourself. The energy of the six pulls you toward feeling the need to do some caretaking and nurturing for those uh, that you care about, for those you love, all right? So if, if you're single, this is a true up close and personal reflective month around issues related to relationships and your home life. So you can be basking in your freedom, right? Nothing wrong with being single, um, absolutely nothing. Uh, you could be, again, enjoying that freedom, perfectly aligned with yourself as a successfully single person. And uh, because I just want to be very clear, not everyone who's single is actively on the prowl for a relationship partner, right? Sometimes you, it's uh, absolutely uh, by choice. And uh, so if you're not looking for a relationship partner, how does this play out for you? The six energy for the month offers you some added oomph with business partnerships, with friendships and other close relationships. This could also be a time where you're really, uh, again, doing some self-healing, some internal work, some nurturing of yourself, of that uh, inner child uh, in you as well. So it can extend to all of these aspects of your own personal development. So if this is the case for you, the topics that might pop in this month have to do with your sense of home, 
uh, home uh, metaphorically and uh, literally, right? Where do you feel at home? Where is your nest? Where do you feel anchored? Do you feel anchored right now? How do you also, how do you love? Where are your partnerships right now? Uh, do you feel that you're being heard? Do you feel that you are in co-creative relationships? Are there, are there some imbalances? All of these will come up for your review right now. If you're single and you're ready to connect with someone, this is gonna prod you to ask those questions about uh, if you really are ready and open to co-create a relationship. Again, look at things that haven't worked before, get pretty clear about uh, how you wanna mop that up, right? <laughs> or how you wanna, yeah, how you wanna sh ship things, how, what needs to be changed in order for you to, to be ready and prepped and on the higher vibe to attract that one person, uh, the person that you really would like to uh, to be with, to spend time with. So May might bring someone into your life with, a, with strong possibilities for, for the future if you are in that groove. Uh, it may involve someone you met last month or potentially someone who's kind of just arriving on the scene, perhaps sometime between May 5th at, or May 9th uh, in that time zone, the 5th through the 9th. I find the most often the one personal year really holds special intensity around work and career. Uh, and yet the one personal year can also open doors to new beginnings with relationship or relationships overall. And yet usually I will say this happens in tandem in a one personal year. You're reestablishing yourself on every level during a one personal year if you're doing it right. <laughs> if you're really, really uh, setting it up uh, in a mindful way. So if this is the case for you, know that May is a time to devote yourself to your relationship life in whatever way that that's showing up for you right now. Home is a key element. And again, this can be across the board. Are you looking to make a move? Uh, maybe it's an entirely different geographical location. Uh, maybe it's simply moving from a house to an, a, you know, to a, a different, a different location. Maybe uh, an apartment to a house. Maybe I mean the, you know, the the choices are endless here. But it could be the focal point of what you're doing right now has to do with your living situation, with your living conditions, and perhaps you have an itch to drive into. Uh, or, or uh, excuse me, to dive into a um, remodeling project. Maybe you're just fine with your house and where it is. You just wanna yeah, no, up level it a little bit, get the landscaping going, getting that water feature uh, designed, um, painting the room, remodeling the kitchen, whatever it is that, uh, that is calling to you, this could really come to the front of the line in May. So this could show up as finding a new living arrangement for an aging parent or maybe a grandparent or maybe dealing with some other urgent or kind of responsibility laden issue having to do with your family on some level. So on a more subliminal level underneath it all, this could be a month where you're asking yourself a lot of questions, a lot of probing questions, again, about your sense of self and home and identity and relationship and and love right and and it can start out with do i feel at home in my body uh do i feel at home in my home do i feel at home in my relationship uh um, those are things that will come up uh, continuously in may it's going to be one of those those things where you could ask um yourself you know and it won't be a surprise because it's probably more than likely i was going to say probably but more than likely uh something that is been an ongoing exploration especially if you're involved in relationships that you're going to be asking is this feeding me or is this draining me uh is it i mean i know relationships are a two-way street i know that uh, the, a relationship can't be perfect all the time. And yet, where am I with this? Uh, and, and how is that looking to me? Is this something that needs to stay or is it something that needs to go? Where do I need to step up and take more responsibility? And where am I perhaps 
uh, too responsible and need to back off and allow others to do their own thing. So those two, uh, two balance points there will be need, need to be taken into consideration right now. This can also be a time where you're asked to step up to the plate and offer your love, support, assistance, uh, just that listening ear uh, to uh, people who are close to you in your life. The energy related to your one personal year is pressing you to start fresh, to assert your independence and generally get, you know, kind of somewhat cocky about standing on your own two feet. <laughs> it's going to it's going to really beg you to get up and uh, stand up and be your unique, vital, authentic self. Uh, starting now, starting right now. So this can be a year where you are in many ways uh, fairly self-absorbed and that's not in a bad way uh, necessarily. It, it's really, you, are, you really are being asked to um, set things up for yourself and tap into that independent spirit. Uh, this is the final year, remember, of that three-year push time that if you've been listening to these, uh, if you've been following your personal years, you will understand what I'm, what I'm saying about that. It started in your eight personal year, and uh, that was power and empowerment, money, all of those topics that, uh, that were driving you during the eight personal year. Last year was your nine conclusions closing out for, you know, lack of a, just a little Ziploc bag on that. And uh, now you're, now you're into a new cycle. And, um, and you are really, really uh, being, being prodded to, to open the door to something entirely new for yourself. I love this comment by Bruce Springsteen, who also happens to be a one life path, the same vibe that you're experiencing in your one personal year. And he says, life is a blank white page daring you to write on it. So I love that. Keep that in, in your mind uh, as you continue on this year, because that really is what you're all about. The energy of your one personal year is right now in May colliding with the nurturing and loving energy of the six. And it sets a stage for a beautiful and a dynamic month for co-creation on every level. A key focus is on the idea of co-creation. Of, of co How can you co-create rather than blaze along solo or alternately uh, participate uh, in, in kind of some weird codependencies, right? <laughs> some things that just eh, aren't working. Uh, so it's it being just crazy, you know, not crazily. Uh, that's not even a word. Well, maybe it is a word. I like to make up words actually, but crazily, I don't think is a good one. Um, what I would say is that you don't want to go on the dramatic end of either of those pendulum swings, right? Just like this um, independent spirit that that leaves you alone, right? <laughs> and you don't want to be the the codependent one. Um, so you're uh, being being asked to forge that middle path. So it really is a great concept for you as you carry forward in your powerful year of new beginnings. Consider this year the rough draft of your new novel. So concentrate on chapter one, which is this entire year, and the rest will follow. So that is your forecast for May. If you are numerology curious, I do offer private readings, online courses, corporate team building, uh, live uh, coaching events, among many other things that are numerology related. Head to FeliciaBender.com uh, for free resources, articles, life path information. So uh, go take a look if this is interesting and numerology uh, piques your interest. So I'm looking forward to meeting with you next month to see what June has in store. In the meantime, have a wonderful month and I'll see you back here then.